Now there's two important points to note about this. Here's a simplified picture of the reaction. The neutron plus the uranium gives us the barium, the barium plus the krypton plus three neutrons. The total mass over here is a little bit less. The total mass of the products of this reaction is less than the total mass that we started with. And what's happened is some of the mass has been converted to energy. And a large amount of energy has been released. And to give you a comparison of just how much energy, let's, um, I'm going to compare this to TNT, which is dynamite. If you have one TNT molecule, and the reaction here is combustion, Okay, the burning or the explosion of a TNT molecule. Okay, let's, let's imagine the energy released from the combustion of one TNT molecule, and we're going to call it X. Okay, one uranium atom splitting, and this isn't combustion, this is fission. The fission of one uranium atom releases an energy that would be 7 million X. So if you imagine the amount of energy released from one TNT molecule compared to one uranium atom splitting, you get a massive amount of energy released from a nuclear reaction compared to an ordinary chemical reaction. Why is there so much energy? Well, it goes back to Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. The energy is equal to the mass times the speed of light squared. C is the speed of light, and C is huge. So C squared is extremely huge. C is 300 million meters per second. So you take that number and you square it, and then you multiply that by the mass, and that tells you how much energy is produced. So when a little bit of this mass disappears in the process of this nuclear reaction, a very tiny amount of mass can be converted into a large amount of energy, according to this equation. And that's why nuclear bombs are so devastating, or nuclear reactors can produce so much power from such a small amount of fuel. So that's the first point to note. When this reaction occurs, the total mass of the products is a little bit less than what went, what went in. And that mass has been converted to energy, and you get a lot of energy from that reaction. The second point is that a chain reaction can occur. And here's why. Imagine our simplified diagram again. The neutron plus the uranium results in barium plus the krypton plus three neutrons. And these neutrons are flying out as a result of this reaction. Now remember, it was the neutron hitting the uranium over here that caused the fission in the first place. And as a result of this, three more neutrons are now flying around. And if this is happening inside a lump of uranium, these three neutrons over here can hit other uranium atoms and cause them to split. And when they split, more neutrons are produced that hit other uranium atoms and cause those to split. And you can see that the amount of uranium that is splitting is going to rapidly grow over time. And all of this can take place in a very, very small fraction of a second. Now, it won't occur in a small sample of material because the, uran the neutrons escape through the surface. And don't once, once they leave the surface of the material, they don't collide with any of the other uranium nuclei. But if you have a large enough lump of material what they call critical mass, then the neutrons collide with other uranium nuclei before they escape the surface. And this chain reaction takes off and the whole thing can blow up. And if it's done just right, this reaction can happen very, very fast and blow up with a, a massive explosion. And that's, that's a nuclear bomb. Now, it's not easy to make this, but a simplified picture might look something like this. You take a piece of uranium like this, and another piece, maybe it's shaped something like this, although exactly how this is done is all classified information. And, and you put an explosion back here behind it, 
and that fires this piece of uranium into the other piece of uranium and both of these pieces would be what we call subcritical masses when they get together they merge into a critical mass and at the same time you're bombarding it with neutrons and you get this massive chain reaction but exactly how this is done and the velocities and the geometry all involves some very complex calculations that only certain people would know the the the, the physicists that work for the military who produce this stuff and um and it's also very very difficult to get enough properly enriched uranium to do this so so the the theory here is relatively simple but actually pulling it off from an engineering standpoint is very very difficult but that's a basic introduction to fission and how it was discovered and what's going on when the atom is split <laughs>